All right. Hi, I'm Matthew. You may have met me before. Um, I work at Parallax Development Studio. I make a bunch of video games. Um, and even if I'm just like one guy who's been in the industry for not that long, even if I had a career before in other industry, I keep getting questions, um, especially at this conference. People come to me and I'm like, but how do you make a game? Or, you know, how do I get into the industry? And it, I know every time I hear this, it sounds like there is this esoteric uh, initiation rites that, that you have to go through. So um, I thought about all those questions. And so there you go, how to become a game developer in five minutes or less. Let's go. So how do you write a game? It's easy. You need to write a game loop. So what's a game loop? It's a very simple thing. You have It's basically a, a while loop that ends only when someone presses the quit button. So what do you do? Well, you process the input of the user, then you update the world, and then you render, and then you loop. Done, you made a game. All right, let's talk about it a bit more. Processing input is easy, it's just keyboard and everything. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother much. Update simulation, what do, I, what do I mean by that? It's basically update, simulate the passage of time in your world. Make the, the time flow in your world. So for example, if you have a very basic physics model, the idea is that you take every entity in the world that's supposed to be like, work in physics, you uh, update its speed depending on its current acceleration. You know, you, you, you might remember that for your like high school teacher. And then once you have the new speed, you just apply the speed, take the direction and move everything. And then if there's a collision, you end the lips. So, you know, like people collide, missiles hit the target, stuff blow up, people die. We're happy. I mean, we're not really happy, but it's a game that we're happy. Uh, and then you render. When rendering is easy. You uh, figure out what the camera can see, like which 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 bit of your of your world is actually visible from the from the lens. And then you put on the screen uh, everything that should be visible at the right angle and distance. And then you put a UI on top. And then you're done. You have a game. Epic. Uh, where is uh, the CPU time uh, spent? It depends. Um, if you're doing like stuff like we do on our side. A lot of the cycle, CPU cycle, and a lot of the work would actually be on the simulation side because we simulate complex, uh, complex world economics, a bunch of stuff, people. Uh, on the other side, if you have more like a next-gen, very fancy, super free rendering game with like RTX and a bunch of other things, you're probably going to spend more time on rendering. But that must be hard. Like, how do you do it? What, what is this? Uh, how, how on earth did you learn all that stuff? The, the thing is, it's not that hard. And... Since you may know that I like history, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you that it's not that hard. For example, you know Space Invaders, right? Everybody knows Space Invaders. It's like one of the oldest games in the world. You know that it's a game that invented difficulty because you know if you play the game, uh, you shoot the Space Invaders, and as you go and the and the Space Invaders die, the game becomes faster and faster. The Space Invaders move faster and faster, and it gets harder. It's not a feature; it's a bug. Because if you remember what we said about the loops, right here. You process input, you build the world, you render. In modern games, when you process the world, you figure out how much time has passed since the last time. But back in the 80s, we didn't think about that. The time was one frame. So as you kill more enemies, the update loop is faster, so you render faster, so the enemies move faster. But I mean, as Bob Ross once said, there is no mistakes, there's just happy accidents. All right, another game that people may have heard about it. Baldur's Gate, released in 96, if I recall correctly. One of the uh, first RPGs I ever played in Windows 95. It was glorious. It was epic. It shipped in debug because there was a crash at the last minute they couldn't find. And the only way to fix it was to have uninitialized memory taken care of by the debug uh, build of FMSVC. Another game that you may or may not have heard, it's not a big game, it's Dragon. It's a game about a dragon. It doesn't have like lots of reviews, but it's still a game that someone shipped and made on Steam. It's an interesting game because it has no raw loops. And if you think, wow, is that because it's made by a disciple of some parents? The answer is no. It's because the author did not know about loops or data structures. The game is made with only variables declared at the beginning of main and a bunch of ifs. There is no loops. There's no data structures. And I'm not saying that to say that the, 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 the developer was bad. That's not my point. My point is to try to lift the mystique that there is around game development. Because the only skill indeed you need at the end of the day is basically programming. And that's it, because code is code. But what about specificities? Performance, real-time constraints, memory location, graphics. Do you remember my previous lightning talk about Unicorn? Well, that's what I think about it. 
So you don't need prior experience. If you're interested, if you want to get into video games, you should apply now. At the end of the day, it's still a C++ programming job. There's no reason why you should be gatekeeped from it. You don't need to have made a game to start becoming a game developer. I'm, I'm living proof of that. A word of caution, even if I'm overextending my time. There are some video game companies out there that may or may not have the best interest of their programmers at mind. And it's a sad fact, but I feel like if I have to talk about getting people in the industry, I have to make a word of caution. So remember, it's a passion, but it's still a job. And it requires half skills to find. So there are some, I've heard stories. I've met people who have heard stories. Have a chat with your local folks and figure out how is that working. Because you can end up in a cool company, but there is also a few other stories. And I really don't want you guys to end up there. Because at the end of the day, we just want to be chilling and cool like um, my neighbor's cat. I call it chunky. Oh, and furthermore, I think your bill should be destroyed. Thank you. <laughs>